Hello, I'm Joel Blackford with Beth Hassett Sabbath Fellowship. Thank you for joining us. We're virtual only. We're based out of St. Paul, Minnesota. The phone number does work if you'd like to contact us. We do the philosophy of eschatology, what you need to know, your reality, our existence. We try to solve a little piece of revelation. We're working on basically the seals, and I term that the same as the birth pangs from Matthew 24. So the seals are Revelation 6. We solve a little piece of the time. We're looking at Wilkerson versus Germany. And Wilkerson has stated many, many years ago that Germany would fall first. This is 1973, folks. Long time ago. You know, wow. Long time ago, 50 years ago. So um, we have false prophets that are out there too. But Wilkerson, I trust him. I think he got a little bit of a, ahead of himself a few times. But basically, what we're doing is chronicling, is this actually happening? Is Germany falling first? And there is the slow death of Europe, according to Spike here. And this is from Ralph, uh, from March of 2023. Industry is being strangled by sky-high energy bills and mountains of bureaucracy. A few days ago, BASF, the world's largest huge chemical company announced plans to close and downsize uh, many facilities and cut many people loose. Then they moved those manufacturing jobs over to China. Um, so basically, according to this article, and they're correct, the West rose to global dominance between the 16th and the 18th centuries. But then there's been 300 years of issues with that too, rife with war, corruption, unrest, uh, assassinations, civil wars, all sorts of problems. And so the West is increasingly diluting itself. We are led to believe that the Green New Deals and the miracle innovations in battery storage technology will solve our problems. We aren't ready to go with those things yet. We're 10 years away, 20 years away, maybe 50 years away. We simply don't have answers to anything right now. We're in trouble. The West is. And Germany is the bellwether of the West, according to Wilkerson. According to the birth pangs, too, of Matthew 24. So we do the philosophy of the end of days. We try to use the Bible properly, look at prophecies, look at fake news, and come up with an answer. First, we're going to jump into Trump. He is a prophet, P-R-O-F-I-T of doom in many ways because he went into germany back in 2018 and said you're going to fall apart you're totally controlled by russia because they will be getting 60 to 70 percent of their energy from russia and a new pipeline now that pipeline has been dis destroyed and so trump um, nobody's ever going to pat trump on the back for making astute comments but in this case he was right and they're claiming now also that trump is too putin friendly um, it, it's like everybody on the planet wants war or death and everything like that. And Trump's the only guy, the only orange man that's saying, no, I'll stop this war in 24 hours. Now, I believe that's good. I believe we're not going into World War III, so I'm not really afraid of that anymore. I am afraid of skirmishes. When I look very closely at the second seal of Revelation, the second horseman, I see that it's Lecoq, Shalom. It is snatching Shalom and it doesn't say war. So don't look for a great war right now. There will be rumors of wars and there will be skirmishes. So according to The Economist, Donald Trump's cant about war in Ukraine drifts over the battlefields, dark as the pall of Russian bombs. I want everybody to stop dying. They're dying, Russians and Ukrainians, he declared in May. If reelected president next year, he would end the war in 24 hours. How? <laughs> he just may make a deal. Um, and so, I, I agree with Trump. I don't always agree with Trump, but in this case, we don't need this war. And he was right about Nord Stream, and he's right now that Germany's in trouble. So now let's go into Wilkerson and what's going on. So back many, many years ago, again, 1973, there was this prophecy. Economic collapse begins in Germany. James Bailey is citing this. I'm not a friend of James Bailey. Uh, he cites anything. I mean, if it's a prophecy, he'll cite it. Um, and down below, also Maurice Clark had a prophecy. I don't always, I generally don't agree with Maurice Clark. Um, he's kind of a prosperity uh, pimp. But anyway, um, Germany will refuse to prop up the euro anymore. Um, basic needs of the poor European nations will be threatened. Many will lose their money overnight. 
as the stage is set for the financial takeover of the Antichrist system. Okay, all right, uh, the dollar will follow. Okay, basically he's parodying uh, Wilkerson. And so this is very old, very accurate. Recession begins in Germany, according to Wilkerson. And if you want to listen to this video, it's 45 minutes long. It's the 1973 prophecy, The Vision by David Wilkerson. And I think it's on Sermon Index or Sermons, whatever it is on YouTube. But you can watch a two minute mark right away. He talks about Germany. Um, and it's not in his book. And I have the book too. So once again, I believe he's a prophet from 1973. And he cited five big things. Worldwide economic recession will affect the lifestyle of every wage earner in the world. It's going to start in Germany, then Japan, then finally the U.S. Corporations are going to go bankrupt. Churches are going to go bankrupt. Nature will have labor pains, just like Hawaii and Maui. Supernatural signs. That doesn't make sense, people. That On one side of Maui, it's lush, and it gets, I don't know, 300 inches of rain per year. It gets about 12 inches on that particular section. Lahaina, I think it's called. Um, but still, it doesn't make sense that it would burn the way it burned. So anyway, supernatural signs, supernatural disasters, earthquakes, things like that, uh, famine, uh, food supplies are dwindling. That's the third seal, okay? Flood of pornographic filth. Filth is number three. Yeah, oh yeah, it's horrible. Rebellion in the homes, number four. Persecution madness against spirit-filled Christians who love Jesus Christ. Yep, he's right on everything so far. Once again, the vision from 1973. Then this is where he fell apart. Wilkerson did. An urgent message of 2009 for 10 years, so from 1999 he had been warning about a thousand fires coming to New York City. It will engulf the whole megaplex, including areas of New Jersey and Connecticut, major cities all across America will experience riots and blazing fires. I still think that will occur. Now, the thing is, it's a timing issue. Okay, I do not know when these things will come to pass. That's Wilkerson speaking, but I do know do know it's not far off. Okay, so other men, Henry Groover said the United States is in trouble too. Uh, same thing with uh, Dudeman down there and Michael Boldea is his grandson. He's a friend. Otherwise, all three of the men are dead now that had prophesied this. But the main thing is Wilkerson seems to be wrong because nothing happened in 2009 or 2010 or 11. And it's 2023 and these fires have not occurred. What about Hawaii? What about Maui? Okay, that's a major fire. And there are fires occurring across the world right now. Um, the one comment on the side is from a friend of mine. It's very interesting. Just take take this to heart. It seems a bit weird. Hurricanes hold flood-inducing rain. This one seemingly did not. Given the value of the land there is so high in this section of Maui, locals will get shut out of the rebuild. A certain company that starts with black may move in and develop the land for uber-wealthy folks. I think my friend is correct with this. That seems to be occurring. They'll just burn things out. <laughs> it's evident to Bain time. So anyway, okay, so getting back to Germany versus Wilkerson's prophecy, German chemical giant BASF will downsize in Europe. Once again, this is from December 9th of 2022. And then this year it's been occurring. So we're absolutely positive that BASF is downsizing and they have shut down some major plants, major stuff. And it, it brings death ultimately because they supply so many of the basics to other companies to, to manufacture. So it, we're feeling it now. This is once again from American Experiment. This is from Reuters, ugly figures as German German manufacturing slumps in July. This is from August 1st. So Berlin, the downturn in German manufacturing sector deepened. Uh, they're recording sharper declines and it looks ugly. These are ugly figures. This is from some guy that's from the Hamburg Commercial Bank AG. Um, output prices fell at the fastest rate since global financial crisis in 2020. The risks are running into trouble during the second half of the year have clearly increased. Yes, they're, they're stagnated. They're in the recession. Okay. German's manufacturing sector is kaput, according to me. Uh, and so well, German industrial production dropped more strongly than forecast in June, according to data released. Yeah, it's all imploding. It's a house of cards. So final uh, purchasing managers index, let's see here, fifth straight month of declines and remaining below the key level of 50, indicating a contraction since July of 2022. Okay, so it's, it's a house of cards in Germany. Will Germany fall or will Wilkerson be wrong? The number of German bankruptcies at the highest level since 2016, and this is from 6-7 of 2023, and I can't say how. Tagesschau, 
probably okay so the number of jobs affected will be horrific germany is the economic engine of europe as germany goes they'll take down all of europe then japan will fall then the united states it happens continued weak private consumption and the alien construction industry in germany okay so this is daily mail and unfortunately there is no fundamental improvement in sight because all important leading indicators in the manufacturing sector are now falling okay so their gdp is falling everything's falling this is from may of 2023 this is from Zero Hedge, so we're going to finish out with Zero Hedge articles. Germans are outraged at the country's oil and gas boiler plan. This is ridiculous. You need oil and gas. They're banning it because they want to be net zero by 2045 and kill people off. But that's Germany for you. Okay, so the government is offering financial help to households to the tune of 30% of the cost of the switch, but Germans appear to not be particularly enticed by that offer. People are outraged and furious, and they should be. They're being killed off. Okay, more zero hedge. Europe enters recession after data revisions paint far gloomier economic picture. This is June 8th of 2023, zero hedge again. And, and so the U.S. is not that far behind, but Germany is in big trouble. They're, they're just going negative very quickly. So the culprit, as so often happens in Europe, was Germany. According to Reuters, the revision was principally due to the downward revision second estimate from Germany's statistics office showing that the Eurozone's largest economy was in recession in early 2023, I argue 2022. But more more evidence. A couple more from Zero Hedge. European Spring, Germany braces for major strikes while France burns. This is a long time ago. This is March of 2022, I mean 2023. Um, Zero Hedge again, but look at the chart first, okay? In the middle there, Germany's population is shrinking and getting older. They are, Basically 30% of their workforce is set to retire by 2036, and their demographics are not looking healthy at all. They're going to be an aging old population. And that's the problem. So this is, again, Reuters that they're citing, basically, that, that the, this is the winter of discontent. So <laughs> horrible. Then once again, the deindustrialization of Germany will cripple the UA, EU for a long time. And so decades of flawed energy policy, the demise of combustion engine cars, a slug, sluggish transition to new technologies, autos failing, banking failing, digital technology failing, aging population. That's the end of Germany, pretty much. So do I agree with Wilkerson? Absolutely. Did he miss a little bit? Yeah, but he died for it. He missed in 2009 and he died in 2011. Do I love all three of these men? Yes. And so I'm just waiting for these things to happen. That's how prophecy works. Okay. So there's one other issue that I have with Berlin and Germany, and that is that they have the seat of Satan. Yes, that's Revelation 2.13. The seat of Satan was moved from Pergamos uh, in Turkey, in Asia Minor, up to Berlin, and it was done in kind of an evil way. And so also the, the throne of Satan was moved from Babylon to Pergamos. So you have the Babylon connection, you have the Berlin connection, and then also in Denver, our, our fearless leader from you know 2008 when he was elected president, he brought that curse into Denver, and Denver is cursed too. I have a friend that keeps on saying, if you want witchcraft, and evil, go to Denver. That is the place where you'll find the most witches, so to speak, okay? So so it, there are issues with Berlin and, and this horrible Pergamos Museum. Horrible, horrible, horrible thing. So anyway, that's where Antipas was murdered. Now, there are people, there are false prophets, P-R-O-F-I-T-S, uh, like John uh, Piper, He's a Calvinist, and he is a strong Calvinist. The Calvinists tend to be sensationists, cessationists, okay? That means that they believe that the Holy Spirit finished in about the first century, and you have no gifts of the Spirit. Now, Piper is not completely on that line, but he hangs around with those types of people. And when he tested out David Wilkerson's prophecy, he said, it does not resonate with my spirit. Well, <laughs> does this resonate with your spirit, John Piper? Your son Abraham hates you hates God, hates everything. Your horrible actions, and I'm from Minneapolis, okay? I know John Piper's friends, and I know of the, I know of his personal problems. And so he might have preached a big sermon, but it destroyed his son. It destroyed him. 
I mean, uh, he's on TikTok saying horrible things about his father and his father deserved it. And that Calvinism is part of the problem. So maybe you should resonate with your spirit first properly in God's spirit before you comment on Wilkerson. OK, um, yeah. And, and you know how I feel about Calvinism. Oh, baby, <laughs> man. So once again, with Wilkerson, you have to understand it this way, that when God gives you a, the ability to prophesy, he, his gifts and his free gifts and his calling are irrevocable. OK, and this is from Romans 11, 28 through 32. So if Wilkerson was wrong, they usually die. And Balaam was one of those where Balaam did what he was not supposed to do. And he died as a result of it. And it's happened to other people too. And by the way, the time of the year when false prophets tend to die is Tishri. Okay. And that's from Jeremiah 28. So just look it up yourself. So Israel was disobedient. Yes. But, but you know what? There is a way for God to show mercy to all through the disobedience. The gifts are irrevocable. Israel is still Israel and physical Israel, spiritual Israel, all those things carry through regardless of what they've done. Okay, so, so keep that in mind. That's Romans 11, 28 through 32. So where are we? We're in the birth pangs. And even Haller, I can't believe that Haller kind of agreed with me today. He said the birth pangs seem to be the seals. So that was interesting. The tribulation comes up later on, people. We're not in the tribulation. We're not in the great tribulation. But as I have stated in the past, it's about a year ago now, um, Germany's going to fall first. And Germany seems to be falling. And Wilkerson seems to be correct in this particular prophecy. You work on you. You can't save the world, but you can save yourself and and loved ones and other people that you come in contact with. Work on your garments, get them clean. It's a wedding. That means that you need to repent and you need to get your clean garments. That actually involves works people, believe it or not. I can show you that some other video. But anyway, uh, be blessed. Thank you very much for your time. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.